Hello to all you guys out there in YouTube land. This is me, DR. Wobbly cam again. Wobbly cam. Holding hand. Hand holding. Holding camera. So, welcome to the third part, I think, of my beginner's guide to running. I've covered some tips and guidelines, how I got started. Today, I'm going to cover equipment. And I think that's a real key part of the running journey. What equipment you have. So, there isn't a lot. There isn't a lot, but there is some, and some to consider. So, I've marked some down in the room. So the first one I want to get is a good pair of running shoes. You can't, can't, can't go wrong if you get a good pair of running shoes. I see a lot of people running in fashion trainers, things like that. You know what? Bad idea. There are so many running shoes to choose from. Don't pick the ones that look like running shoes but a good pair of running shoes. And I will do a video on what I think a good pair of running shoes looks like. There are tons of brands out there. Brands like Asics, New Balance, Brooks. There are absolutely tons of, of brands out there. But for me, a good pair of running shoes. So I am a bit of a Nike fan. I have to admit, these are a pair of Epic Reacts. They are really nice. They're like my daily training shoe, but if you can only afford one pair of shoes, get a pair of running shoes, vital. Don't try running in your running sort of style trainers, your Yeezys and anything like that. You need a good pair of running shoes because the thing is, they give you a bit of cushioning and support. They keep your heel in and they are built for runners. You can actually see there's padding and foam and all that type of lovely stuff that really helps your running journey. So first things first, if you wanna get started running, get a pair of running shoes. Second thing that people normally don't talk about are these things, running socks. And yes, I fold up my socks like a neat package, a neat ball. So I'm gonna unfold them. So a good pair of running socks. What you'll probably notice is they've got extra cushioning at the front and a bit more cushioning at the back at the heel. So these are really good, breathable. Now these are a lovely pair of Primani Active. I say prime money, prime active socks. So you don't have to go, go expensive, but running in normal socks can be quite uncomfortable. So these wick away some sweat, they're really nice. I swear by these as daily training socks. They are brilliant. But if you want to go a bit more expensive, you can get, and these are kind of my 100 miles. These are 100 miles normal socks, they're double line socks and really comfortable. So I tend to save these for race days or when I want to put in a bit of effort, uh, or I want a bit more comfort and I want to go for a bit more long distance. These are awesome. But a pair of running socks or a bag of running socks, yeah, is a for me is a must have. If I knew when I first started running, just to have a pair of running socks, that would have saved me a lot of foot discomfort. I tell you that. So, we got a pair of running shoes, we got a pair of running socks. What's the next thing? Something people don't tell you, but this is my NOS Gallon top I got from running the NOS Gallon. But performance, performance, let me turn, learn to speak, performance t shirts. So I, like most people, ran out in my cotton t shirt, went out about like, oh my God, it got kind of sweaty and, and grimy and it didn't it wick away the sweat and it got heavy. Performance t-shirts, they're not expensive. You can pick them up fairly cheaply. Uh, you get them in running races, but you don't have to. You can go to kind of any kind of department store or shop. I said, I've got some from Primark. Really cheap, but they are just built for running. So they're built for taking the sweat away and they're brilliant. So a performance t-shirt, definitely, definitely on the list of things. So this is not an expensive list, but it's just something to be aware. If you start running in cotton, what you might find is the sweat builds up. Also cotton does chafe and rubs in weird places. So that's something that you just need to consider. I wouldn't say don't run in cotton, but it's something to think about. Also, running shorts. Now I don't run in running shorts, but these are a pair of the early ones that I uh, I have. Uh, the good thing with these is it has pockets. So think about where you're going to put stuff. Uh, running shorts tend to not have pockets. I actually tend to run in running tights and these have a lovely little zipper on the back so that you can put things in. 
when I run in running tights. I quite like the fact they uh, keep everything all compressed in, but also they help in terms of just, they're all weather. So you can run in tights in the cold, you can run in tights in when it's slightly warmer. I find it comfortable too. And when it's really, really hot, then I can switch over to shorts but I tend to run in tights all year round. I know it was really weird. It was something weird as a guy to get used to running in tights and being that uh, as very old school. So those are kind of my top four. So we talked about shoes, we've talked about socks, we've talked about t-shirts and we've talked about the underwear, the, 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 the stuff that we run in. As an optional extra, and this is really an optional extra, think about getting, he said moving around, think about getting a running watch, he says, put it up. So these are really useful when it comes. You don't need them. That's why I said this is an optional extra. These are things you think about after the fact. Because a lot of people start running and they don't really think about, you know, things like pace or all those types of running metrics people talk about. So I don't think it's a must have. If you don't have a running watch or something that keeps track of your distance and the time you've been going out, that's not a deal breaker. But if you can, try and get yourself a running watch. You do not need an expensive one. You don't need to get a top of the range one. Most people don't use a lot of the data that the running watch gives you. Something really middle of the road will be quite useful. And I want to do a video on all of these component parts individually, where I talk about them in more detail, maybe edit it a bit, so it's not just me talking from my phone. This, 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 this gorilla style, he might not necessarily uh, um, transmit in that format. But those are the things to think about. So shoes, definitely some running trainers. That's the first. And these are in order of importance or my order of importance. So running trainers, running socks, running t-shirt, and then running bottoms. And last but not least, as an optional extra, running watch. Anyway. Thank you for watching this video. If you've got any questions about any of these, as I said, I'm going to follow these up in sequential videos um, that will just give you a bit more detail in terms of what I think. And I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, I have run in a few, so maybe I've got some input. But this is, as I said, this is just purely my opinion. But if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the doobly-doo, the comment bar sometimes it's over there or down there uh, and let me know what you think or what how your running journey is going i'm really keen to find out how you guys are doing out there here in youtube land anyway this is dr saying guys peace out have a safe journey wherever you're headed and bye